So this video is going to be about the evidence of DNA as a genetic material. So the first experiment we're going to look at is Griffith's bacterial transformations. So a transformation is going to be a change in the genotype and the phenotype of an organism due to its absorbing of external DNA. So we have a couple different controls for this experiment. So Griffith injected live um, pathogenic cells into a mouse to confirm that these cells were infectious and that they would result in uh, death in the mice. So he also injected mice with non-pathogenic cells to make sure that non-pathogenic cells did not affect the mice when they were injected. So the last control he had is he heat killed some pathogenic cells. So when we heat kill it, we uh, kind of break it down and really just make it non-pathogenic anymore so it's no longer capable of causing infection. So when he took those cells and injected them into a mouse, they also didn't cause infection. So lastly, his actual experiment portion is he mixed these heat-killed pathogenic cells with these living non-pathogenic cells. And when he injected those into a mouse, the mouse actually died. So what had happened is then when he checked the blood, he found that the living um, S cells were present in the blood, which are these living pathogenic cells. And so what happened is these non-pathogenic cells were able to take up the DNA that had uh, come out of these heat-killed pathogenic cells and incorporate them into their own genomes and become uh, transformed, so they acquire this new genotype and phenotype into these pathogenic S cells, which are now capable of causing infection and eventual death in the mouse. So the second experiment we're going to look at is the Hershey and Chase uh, experiment. So Hershey and Chase did their experiments with bacteriophages, which are viruses that infect bacteria. And so the purpose of this experiment was to figure out whether it was the protein portion of a virus that was causing the infection, or if it was the DNA portion that was causing the infection. So first we'll look at this um, protein-based experiment. So what they did is they incorporated a radioactive form of sulfur, which is an important component in um, our proteins, into the... Uh, protein coats of these viruses. So they allowed these viruses then to infect these bacterial cells and then they put them in a blender to get these empty protein shells to fall off the surface of the bacteria and then they were able to centrifuge that mixture to get a pellet of the bacterial cells and then a supernatant of everything that's outside of the bacterial cells. So now since they have this radioactive um, sulfur, they're able to look between the supernatant and the pellet to see where that radioactivity is coming from. So in this case, the radioactivity is coming from the supernatant, which told them that the proteins were staying outside of the bacterial cells and therefore were not um, responsible for causing this infection. So moving on to the DNA experiment, they did a very similar uh, experiment, but with DNA instead of protein. So they put a radioactive phosphorus, which is important for our sugar phosphate backbone in DNA. And so they tagged the DNA with this radioactive phosphorus, allowed it to infect the bacteria, blended it to get the uh, protein coats off the surface of the bacteria and again centrifuged it. But this time when they looked for the radioactivity, they noticed that the radioactivity was coming from the pellet instead of the supernatant. So if it's in the pellet, that means that uh, these components were actually able to make it into the bacterial cells and be inside the bacterial cells. And so that was how they were able to figure out that it was the DNA that was being injected into the bacterial cells and actually responsible for causing this viral infection instead of the proteins which remained um, outside the bacterial cells and were found in the supernatant. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.